Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll be discussing the definitions and broad categories of striped patterns and a comprehensive list of stripes in menswear. This video will be the first in a two-part series on stripes. In the meantime, you can check out our comprehensive article on stripes here. So, before we get into anything specific, let's answer the question, when it comes to patterns, why choose stripes? As you may well know, adding patterns into your garments adds a little bit more visual interest than simply going with solids. Still, because men typically want to project a serious, business-like demeanor when wearing tailored clothes, the patterns that are most often worn are those based on the simple geometry of the line. One of these pattern styles is checks. We covered a list of different checks in menswear in a previous article, which you can check out here. And the other pattern style is stripes, which we'll be covering in this video series as well as our corresponding article. The great thing about these two pattern styles is that they can create more visual interest than simple solids while still ultimately looking formal. However, there is always a risk of making them on the bold side. So, a bit more specifically, what are stripes? It seems like a bit of an obvious question, and it does have a somewhat obvious answer. Simply put, stripes are a series of parallel lines that do not cross each other. Stripes are found in a variety of orientations in classic menswear. Typically, suits and shirts have vertical stripes, although horizontally striped garments do exist. We have a previous article on horizontally striped shirts, which you can check out here. Because of the lack of interaction between lines, stripes are a simpler pattern than checks. Therefore, they are slightly more formal, even when compared in similar garments. Before we get into each specific type of stripe, let's cover some broad terminology first. The following terms can cover multiple different types of stripes. The first broad category is a self-stripe. A self-stripe is one that is integral to the weave, meaning that it's not printed on the fabric or otherwise added later. Seersucker is an example of a self-stripe. We'll be talking more about seersucker later on. The next broad category is the warp stripe. Warp stripes are created by changing the color or increasing the quantity of warp yarns in a garment. More simply put, warp yarns are the vertical yarns in a garment. The next broad category is weft stripes. These are created by changing the horizontal yarns in a garment, and as you might imagine, they're a little bit less common in menswear than warp stripes, but they do exist. Next up are balanced stripes. These are symmetrically patterned, meaning that the width of the stripe and the width of the background is equal. These are often found on shirts, and bengal stripes are an example. As you might imagine, if we have balanced stripes, we also have unbalanced stripes. These are stripes that are not equal in width to the background, or stripes that are not spaced evenly on a garment. Pinstripes are an example of an unbalanced stripe, because the stripe itself is much narrower than the corresponding background. Next up is the term fancy stripes. You may see this in various places. Basically all it is is industry jargon for a type of stripe that doesn't fit into any other broad category or definition. German stripes, rather than being a specific type of stripe, is also a general term referring to the types of stripes favored by shirt makers on or around German Street in London. Therefore, German stripes may describe any other sort of stripe style, including candy stripes, Bengal stripes, etc. One note here, the only two terms that we've covered so far that are mutually exclusive are warp stripes and weft stripes. Phrased another way, a garment can have either warp stripes or weft stripes, but not both. If it did have both horizontal and vertical stripes, that would necessarily mean that a check pattern would then be created on the garment. Now that we've got our broad categories out of the way, we can start getting into all of the different specific types of stripes. We'll start with balanced stripes and go first with simple two-tone stripes in order from narrowest to widest. First up are Bengal stripes. They're a two-color vertical pattern with the stripe and the background being of equal width. This striped fabric was originally shipped to markets around the world from Bengal, India, now Calcutta. 
The term is used to describe shirt stripes, but never suit stripes. Next up are candy stripes. These are also equal width stripes of white and one other color used on fabrics for shirts and other sportswear. This stripe gets its name because it reminds many people of a candy cane. It's a little bit broader than a Bengal stripe. By the way, don't worry about all of these size comparisons. If you get confused at any point, just check out our related article and it will all be there for you in writing. Next up is another stripe with a food-related name, sandwich stripes. These are bold vertical stripes, typically about half an inch wide. Sandwich stripes are used to describe sports jackets, pants, and outerwear, but never shirts. Regency stripes are vertical stripes of equal width, usually associated in an historical context with Regency England. Like Bengal stripes or candy stripes, Regency stripes are typically white alternating with one other color. However, the difference here is that Regency stripes can be quite wide, sometimes up to an inch or more in width. Next are awning stripes, also called cabana stripes. These are bold vertical stripes that remind most people of the type of fabric used for awnings or outdoor furniture. They're very wide, and for that reason, they're never used to describe shirt stripes as they would probably be too bold a pattern. Finally, in this subcategory are prison stripes or convict stripes. As you might imagine, this pattern refers to broad, black and white, horizontal stripes. The pattern was originally designed in the mid-18th century, designed with the goal of making escaped prisoners immediately visible when they were being chased. The use of the pattern waned by the mid-20th century, and it's been replaced now in most contexts, at least in prisons, with solid color jumpsuits. However, you might still see the pattern on non-prison related garments in some contexts. Our next subcategory are all still balanced stripes. However, in this case, they're either going to be multicolored or textured in some fashion. We'll start this subcategory with rugby stripes. Rugby stripes are horizontal stripes similar in width to prison stripes or awning stripes. They're typically found on more informal men's shirts, especially rugby shirts. In this context, the colors displayed on the shirts would obviously be the team colors of various rugby teams. Rugby stripes are common in one color and in white, or in two alternating colors, which is why we've put them in this subcategory. Sometimes, the multicolored versions will also be accented with a thinner white stripe, meaning in that case that they'd be unbalanced stripes. Next up are track stripes, also called alternating stripes or variegated stripes. Basically, what all of these terms mean is that even if the color of the background stays the same, the color of the stripes themselves does not. Track stripes are frequently used in shirts. Sometimes you'll see them accented further with single threads of another color, such as black, acting as a sort of outline. In these cases, they would then also be unbalanced stripes. Next up in this subcategory is seersucker, which in addition to being a sort of striped pattern, also refers to the fabric. Most often made of cotton, seersucker launders easily, requires no ironing, and masks wrinkles. All of these things mean that seersucker is an ideal fabric for summer garments. Finally in this subcategory is another type of striped fabric called hickory stripe or railroad stripe. It's an offshoot of seersucker. This fabric originally came about in the late 19th century. It's a type of heavyweight dark blue and white seersucker and was most typically used to construct garments for railroad workers such as hats, overalls, coats, or pants. Okay, now we've covered all of the different types of balanced stripes, so let's get into unbalanced stripes. As before, we'll start with the simple two-tone stripes working from narrowest to widest. First up here are hairline stripes. They're very narrow stripes, about the width of a hair, achieved by weaving single threads of a different color into a background. Hairline stripes are typically used in fabrics for men's shirts, neckwear, and other apparel. They don't usually describe suit stripes as often. Next up are pin stripes, also sometimes called banker stripes. These two are thin stripes, usually about the width of a pin, meaning that they're about 1 16th of an inch wide or less. Pencil stripes, also called dress stripes, are another type of fine stripe, usually used for suits. 
They're constructed of two or three warp yarns, those are vertical yarns, and as such they're about a sixteenth of an inch wide, just wider than a pinstripe. These stripes get their name because they're roughly the same width as a carpenter's pencil mark. They can be in colors that either contrast or blend with the background color. Next up are chalk stripes, also a pattern typically used in suiting, and they get their name because they're roughly the same width as a tailor's chalk line. While this term was historically used to refer specifically to white or off-white stripes on a contrasting dark background, the term is now used a little bit more generally to just refer to the style or size of the stripe. As such, chalk stripes can now be found in almost any color, but they're always wider than both a pinstripe and a pencil stripe. You'll never see this term used to apply to shirt fabrics, but only to suit fabrics and other outerwear. Next up are double stripes, triple stripes, etc. Basically, this is kind of a general term, just meaning that you'll have different kinds of narrow stripes, be they pinstripes, pencil stripes, and so on, that are grouped together in groups of two, three, etc. Next up are multi-track stripes, which is a pattern that refers to stripes of either different spacing, different stripe width, or both, grouped together in various combinations. You'll often see them in shirts, but because they're a little more avant-garde, you won't see them in a lot of other types of garments. Next, let's get into multicolored unbalanced stripes, starting with blazer stripes. Blazer stripes are wide vertical stripes, usually used to describe the kind you would find on traditional school or team blazers, especially in England. They almost always refer to jackets and never to shirts. Next up are shadow stripes. These are vertical stripes, usually narrow, that are bracketed or shadowed by stripes that are either lighter or thinner. The classic shadow stripe features shadows that are variations on the main color. However, more modern styles of shadow stripe can feature shadows that are in any contrasting color. The same term can alternately refer to a type of fabric where the contrasting stripes are created by twisting the yarns of a garment in the opposite direction. As such, these types of shadow stripes can only be seen in certain lighting conditions. As you might already be aware, we have a wide selection of shadow striped socks in the Fort Belvedere shop. You can check those out here. A subcategory of shadow stripes are bar stripes, where the shadowing stripes symmetrically flank both sides of the main stripe, and there can also be multiple shadows to the same stripe. Next up are halo stripes. These are a type that you'll often see on suits. They look as though the main stripe is actually the same color as the background and is surrounded by stripes of a contrasting color, usually brighter, that provide a sort of halo effect. Next up is a fairly significant and common type, regimental stripes, also called battalion stripes. These are stripes in colors that were traditionally associated with various English military regiments that were then worn by the officers as they came back and dressed in civilian clothes. In addition to authentic regimental stripes, which are still worn, the pattern can more generally refer to similar styles of stripes that don't have a military connotation. They can be worn by civilians in both England and the United States, and, of course, elsewhere around the world. Here's an interesting bit of trivia for you. Englishmen typically wear their regimental stripe ties so that the stripe slants from the left shoulder down to the right. Conversely, Americans wear their regimental stripes so that they go in the opposite direction, from the right shoulder down to the left. This style of pattern became particularly popular in England following the First World War and then spread to America shortly thereafter. It got quite a boost when Edward VIII, then the Prince of Wales, and who would later become King and then the Duke of Windsor, wore this kind of tie to the United States when he visited in 1919. Next are collegiate stripes, also called club stripes. These are contrasting stripes of a bright and dark color, and they're particularly popular in gray-yellow-red or gray-green-blue combinations. Roman stripes, also called rainbow stripes, are bright stripes in groups of contrasting color. They typically run vertically on the warp yarns, and you might sometimes see them in modern-styled shirts, although you will see them used for neckties as well. 
Ombre stripes, as the name would suggest, are stripes that typically incorporate the effect of an ombre, or a shaded gradient. You'll typically see this gradient within the stripe itself, as opposed to the background. Our next subcategory is textured unbalanced stripes, with these, we'll start with broken stripes. Broken stripes are a pattern typically used for suit fabric. You'll see that the stripes are not solid, but rather made up of a series of aligned dashes. Satin stripes are a pattern of alternating shiny and matte stripes that are created by the way the fabric is woven. These are particularly popular for dress shirts made of fine cotton. A satin stripe may refer to any color or width of stripe, but it most typically refers to a solid color stripe with a contrasting weave. Next up are mourning stripes, also called cashmere stripes, or in some circumstances, sponge bag. While there are numerous variations of striped or otherwise patterned trousers for formal day wear, also referred to as morning dress, the most classic and standard example is that of the morning stripe or cashmere stripe. Finally in this subcategory are ticking stripes, which refer to any of several simple vertical striped patterns, usually in black and white or blue and white, that resemble mattress ticking. These patterns are particularly popular for shirt fabrics, and you'll also sometimes see them in denim or other canvas fabrics. Finally today, we do have a couple of honorable mentions that don't necessarily fit into any of the previous categories we provided, but we felt that we ought to mention them here. The first of these are madras stripes. While the pattern known as madras usually features a checked, grid or otherwise geometric design, you will occasionally see among the patchwork of patterns some stripes. In these cases, those stripes among the madras can be referred to on their own as madras stripes. Next up is wallpaper print. This is a pattern that features a strong vertical emphasis, either a stylized stripe or simply a more vertical orientation of different patterned objects. Next up are mill stripes. These are featured on a type of finely striped fabric that looks like a solid from a distance. This term refers exclusively to shirt fabrics, as it's a little too fine to really be used properly in conjunction with suit fabrics. Finally, we've got another type of fabric, end on end. This is constructed so that the individual warp or vertical yarns alternate color. It's a very fine stripe. All right, there we go. That concludes our fairly exhaustive list of all the various types of stripes in menswear. Did you stay with us? If not, remember that you can always check out the related article or just go back to various points in the video if there's something you want to brush up on again. In conclusion, stripes are a very versatile pattern style. They can be featured in casual orientations that evoke a sporting or club heritage, but they can also be right at home in more formal garments. You'll see them on things worn by everybody from bankers to resort goers. This wide range of possibilities speaks very well to the versatility of stripes, as they can very easily be dressed up or down using different garments in your wardrobe. This begs the question, however, What's the best way to incorporate stripes into your wardrobe? We'll give the answer to that question in part two of this video series, so stay tuned for that coming soon. In the meantime, tell us how you'd suggest to wear stripes in the comments section below. In today's video, you'll notice I'm wearing two different kinds of stripes. We'll get to those in a moment. The jacket I'm wearing is a blazer, it's navy and double-breasted, and has gold-colored buttons, presumably in brass. Therefore, it's a relatively traditionally styled blazer. The shirt is from Charles Tirrett and features stripes in white and light blue. At first glance, it might be tempting to call it a Bengal stripe, but upon closer inspection, you'll see that the light blue stripes are actually a little bit wider than the white stripes. Because it's unbalanced, we would most properly call this type of stripe a pencil stripe. The tie is also vintage and features alternating stripes in maroon and gold. It's not quite as complicated as a regimental or battalion stripe would be, so more simply, we'd probably refer to it as a club stripe. As usual, most of my accessories today come from Fort Belvedere. The collar clip is brass and plated in yellow gold. 
The cufflinks feature a knotted monkey's fist design. They're sterling silver and also plated in gold, and I wore them today to tie into the sort of nautical theme I've got going with the blazer. My other accessory today is a gold-colored lapel pin that was given to me upon graduation from my alma mater, Gustavus Adolphus College. My final Fort Belvedere accessory today is the pocket square. It's light blue linen and features a hand-rolled yellow X stitch. All of the Fort Belvedere accessories I'm wearing today are available in our shop, and you can check them out here. My trousers are simple flat-fronted slacks in a khaki color that would probably be more accurately described as stone. My socks are in a matching color, or at least nearly so, and my shoes, which you've seen before, are dark oxblood penny loafers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.